Well, hello everyone, and I'm super stoked to be here. I'm Fran with the developer relations team at WP Engine, focused on headless WordPress. And in today's video walkthrough, we're gonna learn how to create a headless WordPress site with multilingual functionality using Next.js, its internationalized routing feature, the Polylang plugin for WordPress, WP GraphQL for WordPress, and the WP GraphQL Polylang extension. Now, this walkthrough assumes a fundamental understanding of Node.js, React, and its data fetching methods and routing in Next. Also, WP GraphQL, Apollo Client, and WordPress. So let's get started, shall we? To get started, let's run through the checkoff list that I have in my blog post walkthrough in relation to this video. Now, I have pulled up the prerequisites on my blog post here. You need Node.js and NPM installed. You need a code editor. I'm gonna use Visual Studio Code. You need a WordPress host with an install already spun up. WP Engine's, of course, my go-to, or you could do a free demo environment with local, and then a GitHub repository. Starting with a Polylang plugin, let's talk about that. So the Polylang WordPress plugin enables multilingual site capability for numerous languages for your WordPress content. This is super valuable because this allows you to create content and pages that are localized to your users that speak different languages. Now, there's a pro version, but for this tutorial, we're gonna use the free version. So let's go over to our WP admin and install the Polylang plugin. Let me go over here, go over to plugins. Let's add new. And then let's search for the Polylang plugin. Should be the first one that pops up here. Okay, let's go ahead and install it now. Hit activate. And a wizard pops up and it's going to walk you through instructions on how to set your Polylang configuration here. So the first thing it's asking us to do is select the languages to be added. So the first one is English. And let's go and find English US. Add that. And then let's find Mexican Spanish for this walkthrough. Espanol. Add that, hit continue. We're not gonna use media for this walkthrough, so let's keep going here. Content without language. So these are the posts and pages and categories or tags without the language. And again, we're setting this default to be English. You can set it any language you want to, but in this case, we're gonna set it to United States English. So let's continue. And then there's other things that you can set your settings to, but in this case, we'll go ahead and return to the dashboard. Now back in our WP admin dashboard here, there's a couple of things that we need to do before we start configuring the Polylang plugin. Let's go ahead and go to settings here and check our pretty permalink settings because in this code tutorial, it's gonna be set around having the post name option selected for your permalink. So let's make sure we have that all set under post name and save changes there. All right, now that we've every, got everything configured and set up with our permalinks, our settings for Polylang, the next step is to populate some data in English and Spanish. So let's navigate to the posts option in the menu left-hand side here. And you can see all my posts here. Now, I'm a bit of a Star Wars nerd, so I've already populated the first episode of Star Wars, Episode 1, Phantom Menace, and its crawler. This is the Polylang plugin at work on the left-hand side, as you can see here. Now, there's an American flag and a Mexican flag, and what's this, this is symbolizing and doing that it's tying a single post type together with a translation that you add to it. 
in this case English and Spanish. Now that we have a way to have a post where it is in a default English version and then a translated version of Spanish tied to that, let's put the Spanish version translated into the Spanish post type here. So let's go ahead and jump into the post editor. And if you focus down to the right hand side of the menu down here, it tells you, hey, these are the languages that you have available. And in this case, with this post, this is the Spanish version of your post. What we need to do is input that Spanish data in here and we're gonna use Bing Translator. So let's toggle back over to our uh, English post. Copy the title first. Go back to Bing Translator. Put the title in. Copy that. Go back over to the Spanish version. Paste that in and we're gonna do the same for the crawler content in the blocks here. So let's update first to save that. Jump back to English. Copy the first block. Copy the, copy the block here of content. Go back to Bing. Paste that content in. Copy the Spanish translated version. Back into our editor. Then paste the content in these blocks here and hit update. Okay, we're done with that part. We have now populated a post where it has an English version and then tied to it is exact translated Spanish version. All right, we've got our post set up where we have an English version of it and our Spanish version of it. This is my favorite part now. Now we're gonna get jam stoked because we're gonna decouple this thing starting with turning our WordPress site into a GraphQL server. Woo! All right, let's go over to plugins and download the WP GraphQL plugin made by my main man, Jason Ball. So go to add new and then search for WP GraphQL. It should be the first one that pops up. There it is with the GraphQL elephant. Cool logo. And then activate that. Great. We're set up there. The next thing that we need to do is extend Polylang with this Gra uh, GraphQL extension with WP GraphQL. So I'm going to navigate over to their GitHub repo page here. And then I'm going to go over to the green code button. Hit that. And then download the zip. I've already done this. So after you do it, go ahead and go to WP Admin, add new, upload the plugin, choose your file here. There's the zip I downloaded for the polylang. Install now. Go ahead and activate that and then go back here and we have our extended GraphQL schema with WP GraphQL and the polylang extension of it. Okay, so now that we have our post data for Spanish and English versions and extended the WordPress and Polylang data schema with a GraphQL layer using WP GraphQL and its extension, let's build our queries to grab that multilingual post data from WordPress. In the WordPress admin here, when you download WP GraphQL, you're gonna get a graphical IDE, which is a UI Query Composer where you'll have pane set up and you can write your queries in to get the data back. The first thing we're going to want to do is go ahead and go to my blog post where I have pre-built the query for you. So we're going to copy that and I'm just going to copy and paste it in here. And let me explain what's going on in here. So essentially what the Polylang plugin is doing here with the WP GraphQL extension is right up here. It's allowing the language to be the variable and it requires the language code filter enum to be the required value. So when we query the language variable as an object in this composer and we hit play, it should give us all the post in that language. Let's get stoked and try this. So let's pull up the query variables pane here. Let me open up an object. 
get the language variable. It's already auto populating. That's one of the magic things about GraphQL I love. And then let's grab that code filter of English first. Hit play. And you see the excerpt here, it's all in English. And the slug is hello world. And then there's the code, English. Perfect, we're all getting that back. Now let's see if the Spanish version will work. Espanol, yes, let's press play. La adjetación, there it is. Yep, ha envelito a la República Galactica. Stoked. We've got our translations working with this query. Woo! Okay, we've set up our WordPress backend with Polylang to be a headless decoupled CMS. The next thing we need to do is set up our front end and clone down the starter Next.js demo that I've made for this walkthrough. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna navigate over to my blog post here Simply copy the git clone command, and then let's jump over to terminal. Paste that in, okay? And then let's make sure we change directory into the correct one, which is the one we just cloned. Dash poly lang wpgql. Then you're gonna run npm install to Install all the dependencies. Okay, once we're done with that, let's open <clears throat> the code editor. And as you can see here, opening up Visual Studio Code, after cloning it and running npm install, the file structure here in my next starter has a components folder, a pages folder, a lib folder, a styles folder. I folded this starter to include static site generation data fetching method, the Apollo client instance and dynamic post page routing with Next.js internationalized routing. We started this walkthrough on how to internationalize our content in WordPress and decoupling it with WP GraphQL, bringing some Jamstoke to the Jamstack. Now in this section, we're gonna put it all together by connecting it with our front end and exploring it, its internationalization feature. I have the Next.js internationalized routing Docs here pulled up, and Next.js makes it seamless and easy to set it up through a config object with the property i18n. Let's go over to our code to see how that works. So going over to Visual Studio Code here, I am in the next.config.js file. And as you can see here, we have an object with i18n right here as the property and within that object, you define your key, which is the locale. And then the default locale, which is right here, English, okay? And locale is a syntax used to define language and it is the UTS identifier. More on that in the tutorial. However, in this case, English is a default and Spanish is a translated and then our available locales are in this array right here. Now, we have this all set up. We've set up Next.js now in this config object to know what languages by locales that we have available. The next thing we need to do is set up a link so we can click on to filter between those languages on post. How to do this is, in this project, I've done this in the components directory in the navbar.js file. So let's go ahead and navigate over there and go into this file. And let me walk you through how I did this. Now, the first thing we need to think about breaking this down here is we need to program a way to list all the locales available, which locale the user is currently active on and the actual path of that locale. So on line two right here, as I highlight this destructured use router hook, I am doing this right here by destructuring use router with next router imported on line two. And then once that is imported, I need to set up my router. So I put a new constant here. And then once I put that in, I destructure it to extract all the locale constant variables that are supported in my application. So 
So this constant variable seen here are all my locales, just to go over this, the actual active locale that the user will be on when viewing the page and the path that reflects the locale that they are on. What we need to do next is to only show the user the locales that are not active so that that user can know, hey, what locale they can link to besides their current default on the page. Default is English in this case, and then they will see, oh, I have a Spanish link that I can click to translate. How I did this was I set up a constant called available locales right on line eight here, and let me highlight it. And I created a constant, I called it available locales. I set it equal to locales and I filter through that array of locales. Now filtering through that array of locales, I return only the locales that are not equal to the active one. Therefore, the user can see what's available. All right then, now that we have all our constant variables set up with the use router hook at the top of the navbar.js file, what we need to do next is pass this into the return statement with a list of links to make it an actual link with next link component to display a clickable link in which it'll act as our toggle between the two different locales with the correct path. So let's look at the unordered list here. I take my available locales within this unordered list and then I'm gonna go ahead and map through them. And when I map through them, I return the list item here and within this list item inside, I replace the anchor tag right here with a way to make that letters uppercase for that value dynamically so that when a user sees that on the nav bar, there's a uppercase EN and an ES. Lastly, in the navbar.js file, let me highlight the link component and then walk you through what is going on here. So I added a new prop of locale and I set it equal to the locale to change the locale from English to Spanish and vice versa. Then I pass the link it should navigate to in relation to where the user is currently located. So we use the as path variable from our use router hook that we destructured. And in the href, as you see, we set it equal to as path. Now that this is set, the user can click on the link in the navbar to toggle back and forth for the proper language and its path. Now that I've finished in my navbar.js file, let's go over to the app.js file to wrap the components so the file and the entire app has access to it across pages. All right, so then jumping over to the pages directory and then in the underscore app.js file, we've imported the navbar from the components directory and the navbar.js file. Then once that's imported, we can simply input the component within this fragment. And now this allows us within this file to have it accessible across all our pages in our app. Next step is I quickly wanna go over our Apollo client and GraphQL setup. So let me go over to the lib directory. And then in this lib directory, our apollo-client.js file here. So this project does use Apollo client and GraphQL. With this walkthrough, I chose to just create a lib folder, as you can see with the apollo client.js file, to make this Apollo instance. I did not use the .env.local, which is a Next.js convention to not show environment variables and allow Next to detect those. In this demo's case, I am actually directly putting the endpoint right here from our WordPress GraphQL instance into this object function. All right, so the next step is to look at the home page in our app. Remember that GraphQL query we made with the language variable at the beginning of this walkthrough? We're gonna go over to the pages directory here and within the pages directory, let's look at the index.js file, which is the home page. Focusing on the bottom half of our index.js file, which is our home page, we have our get static props function right here. Now within this get static props function, we have that query that we made back in the WP admin with WP GraphQL. Whoops, right here. And what's going on here is that we're querying for all the posts and their different languages tied through their default settings. Up here, we are using the Apollo client 
to help to fetch this data along with the setting constant of const language equals locale dot to uppercase, calling it and providing that filter that we have that we made within that nav bar. Great, we're on the final countdown here uh, with this walkthrough because we have our project set up now where we have the home page displaying all of our posts with the ability to click at the top of the nav bar and switch paths between Spanish and English. The next thing we need to do is jump back into our WP admin to create a query in our graphical IDE to get a single post and its translation. So let's jump into WP admin back in WordPress into our graphical IDE and create that query. Here we have our old multiple post query. Let's go ahead and paste in the single post query that I've pre-made for this walkthrough. Now copying and pasting this pre-built query here that you can grab in the file starter kit that I made for this demo. I'm gonna paste that in there and let's go over what's going on in this query. Now this query is asking for the single post type with the variable being the slug right here. And then we're asking for the fields we want to grab along with the available translation right here. And within that translation, the language is the variable right here. Okay. Now when you query for your variables via the slug, which will be the default language and then press play and you um, ask for the translation of that slug, you'll get back the single post you want by its slug and its available translation. So let's try it in the Query Composer pane here. Let's open up an object and then let us get the slug first. And in this case, the slug is, uh, let's do episode one, which is the Phantom Menace, which I named it the Phantom Menace. menace comma and then let's get that translated version of the english phantom menace post in spanish okay let's go ahead and hit play and see what we get back all right as you can see here we are pulling the english version with that slug here the phantom menace and then at the bottom of that same post we have its translated content down here perfect it's working pretty stoked now we got this single post query working the next step is we need to walk through the dynamic routes page in the next js front end and setting up this query we just made which will allow users to click on the post they want to see on the home page and it routes them to that single post detail page dynamically. So when they are on the post detail page, users can continue to able to filter between English and Spanish. Now that's awesome. Let's go ahead and go back to the Next.js front end in Visual Studio Code here. And then we're going to go to the pages directory, which we're on. Drop that down and then go to the posts subdirectory and then within this dynamic post slug.js file let's focus on the get static props function at the bottom of the file right here now we need to create all the paths for only the existing default routes which is happening right here in this const and then lastly we need to have a way to add the locales for those existing paths which is done in this return statement right here. And in this return statement, let me dive deeper into what's going on. So within this return statement, I have an array open right here. And I'm spreading out the paths that already exist, which are the default routes. Now, the trick here is to spread out another instance of paths with the flat map method right here, okay? And the flat map method allows you to go deeper into another level of array with those locales. Uh, it's like the map method, if you will, but it allows you to flatten out arrays that have a top level array, in this case, the default paths, and then flatten them out into that top level of array. Then for each path, it returns a new map statement 
mapping through the locales and returning the path and that locale right here together. Whew, okay. This is the last thing that we needed to code in order to make this work. Stoked. Stoke is high. And lastly, the thing we need to do is go ahead back to terminal, run the development server off localhost 3000 and see this thing work. Let's do it. I'm gonna go over back to terminal, npm run dev to spin up the localhost 3000. And then let me go back into my browser. And here it is. Here is our site. Now, as you can see here, I have the Star Wars Episode One Phantom Menace, and then I added more post data with Star Wars Episode Two and then Episode Three. Right now it's in English, and at the top of the nav bar, you can see that within our available locales, we have Spanish that's available to us, and within on the page that's default is the English one. So let's click that and see if it translates. Boom. It's translated to the Spanish version on this site. Now let's go ahead and click on this post to get to the details page of this post and its path. There it is. It's translated version, the title and the Spanish crawler content. All right. Now on this page, let's see if we can translate it back to English, which EN stands for here. And it's telling us, hey, on the nav bar, that's what's available to us as far as locales. Clicking on that, and then it's back to English. Woo! All right, this works. All right, that does it for this walkthrough. That was so much fun to make for me. And with this tutorial, I hope you take away not only some jam stoke, but the importance of adding multilingual capability on your sites and apps, leveraging tools like WP GraphQL and its extensions like Polylang, Next.js internationalized routing, as well as the Next.js fundamental core features. You know, again, just one way of approaching multi-language headless WordPress. I'd love to hear your thoughts on your own approaches and builds. Hit me up on our Discord channel. And once again, you can follow along within this blog post tutorial with this video. And until then, happy coding.